Back in 2020, I made this video called I Order Chick-fil-A in Minecraft, and recently there's been some new interest in the video, and so I thought I'd revisit it uh, recently. And I realized I didn't talk too much about how I actually accomplished ordering Chick-fil-A in Minecraft. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how I ordered Chick-fil-A in Minecraft, as well as how you can uh, use some of these concepts in your own work uh, in order to understand how different apps or services you use work under the hood, and maybe how that can help you write better code yourself. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's take a look, in case you haven't seen the original video, at what the order process looked like. As you can see, you'd walk into the, uh, the store in the game and talk to the NPC, who would allow you to order anything from the menu. You'd pick your vehicle, pick your payment method, and then you were good to go. You would go to the store and your food would be uh, ready as soon as you checked in. So exactly like the mobile order works, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Now that you understand what the video looks like, we need to talk about something else called reverse engineering. If you haven't heard the term reverse engineering, it's fairly straightforward. All it means is to take something that's already built and figure out how it was built and how it worked under the hood. In the case of software, especially apps that talk to servers uh, from a uh, you know, phone, for example, you're able to inspect the network requests, so the requests that the phone sends to the servers uh, powering the actual um, company or app or whatever, you're able to see what those requests are and what data is contained within them using what's called a reverse proxy. So I have one open in front of me. This is connected to my phone. So every request my phone is making right now, uh, which is a little scary, is being sent through uh, this app called Proxyman. And so essentially what this is, is my phone talks to Proxyman and Proxyman talks to these servers. In other words, this is a man in the middle attack. So um, you could be potentially uh, hacked is kind of a misnomer, but I'll use the term anyway. You, know, you could be hacked using this method where somebody is uh, has some malware on your phone and they uh, send your requests off to their server instead of like my computer, for example, uh, that I've been authorized to do this and, and all that. Um, they'd be able to see the requests you're making, be able to modify them or modify the responses. And so that's kind of where that attack can be dangerous. In our case, for what we're doing here, as sort of a research activity, it's great because I'm able to see exactly what's going on as I open up the Chick-fil-A app, as I play with it, as I make an order or whatever. So speaking of making an order, I'm gonna go ahead and restart the app on my phone here. And as I open the app up, you'll see a lot of requests are now streaming in through Proxyman. So if I scroll up a little bit, you'll see, I'm looking for a very specific one here. So I found the request I'm looking for here. This, as you can see, is the order API, chickflay.com, orders locate, all this, all this stuff here. Essentially what this is doing though, is it's saying, hey, get me the menu for this particular store. And so that store is the one I have favorited. Uh, it's one of the ones in my local area. And so you can see this is the menu for the store. The menu, if I switch to the tree view here, is split up into categories. And the categories are things like limited type flavors. So uh, it's winter time as I'm filming this. That means it's like the peppermint shake and coffee and whatnot. Here's breakfast, here's meals, here's entrees, sides, and so on. You can kind of go through this at your own pace. So we have the menu. That's sort of step two. Step one is to actually fetch the list of my favorite restaurants. That's what I do in the video. That's also what the code still does to this day. Um, for whatever reason, they have sort of changed how a lot of this works. They're using a new uh, API here, uh, this d2c.api.mindchickfilet. Um, if I click onto body, you'll notice it is in this proto format, which I do not understand. Uh, I've never seen that out in the wild before, so that's kind of news to me. Um, I'm sure that's fairly a standard thing to do these days, and uh, this application proto is the content type, so there's some research to be done as to exactly what um, that is. I think it's a proto buff could be. Um, it's a familiar term, but I'm not exactly sure they're using it in this um, particular context, so something new to me. So this is me in the edit. Um, I am pretty sure it is protobuf. I just did a quick search as I'm editing this together and I found the uh, Google page for protocol buffer, so protobuf as I said, and it is a different format uh, as compared to JSON. Um, so they have some, some interesting stuff here. Nothing for Swift, which is what the Chick-fil-A app is mostly written in, uh, though they do have Objective-C, so it's, it's highly likely they're using this and you know, porting it into Swift or, or using it um, via some bridging headers and whatnot. So. Um, yeah, it's very likely that this is uh, this is what they're using. So anyway, just wanted to put that in here for your uh, your information. That being said, the old API that I used in the video still works today. And so the code I've written will talk to that endpoint while the app is not doing the exact same thing. But point being, first step, fetch, the, uh, fetch locations, fetch my favorite locations. Step two, once I pick one, I'm gonna fetch the menu for that location. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and mimic that in the app. I'm gonna pick this location right here. I'll select drive through and I should get a menu. There we go. And so if I, on Proxy Man, look at the uh, request for the menu, you'll notice that the categories are as we expect. Here we go, limited time flavors, followed by, uh, okay, breakfast is at the bottom. I think there might be some extra information that is returned in another request somewhere or somewhere else in the menu request that I'm just not aware of. Um, because for whatever reason, breakfast ends up at the bottom, which makes sense because it's past breakfast time. I actually can't place that order right now. Uh, but anyway, mobile meals is there, entrees is there, sides is there, uh, beverages and uh, salads and so on. So that is all there in the order we expect. Uh, including sauces. So there you go. We're seeing the menu as it's being returned to us by the server here. So that's great. We have step number two complete. Let's go ahead and actually create an order though. We're going to get just one entree for the sake of doing this. We've added it to order and so that'll give us step number three. If I scroll down and find that next request, and there it is. So this is request number three. Now that we have an item, we need to create an order from that item. I do this slightly differently in code and we'll get to that a little bit later. But point being is in the app, when you add an item uh, to your cart, it creates an order on the server. The server returns the ID of your order as well as some extra info like the uh, semi-finalized price. We're not gonna get that full price later because they have to calculate tax and some other information there, but we at least have a general idea of what that is. We have a calorie count, we have some pictures. We have some other info about the order. This order status is create, which means that we are in the creation process of this order. It's not been submitted. We, uh, other than that in here, we don't have a payment method selected and we do not have a vehicle selected. And that doesn't actually show up in this JSON yet. So that's one thing that this API um, does not do. In an app, you're gonna have code to handle missing sections like this, but when you're reverse engineering, it can be quite painful to be sending these requests off. And then all of a sudden, you get to you know step number five or six or whatever down the road as you sort of build up an understanding of what the app is doing. Um, the app is gonna add these new fields in and sort of change your entire perspective on what you're working on. You'll have to update it. And, uh, that's just sort of the process. So we'll get to that in just a moment as we actually place this order. So let's head to the My Orders tab. We're going to hit Continue to Checkout. It's going to make this request to GC API and MyChickFlay.com. This is the list of my um, payment methods. So in the app, you'll see there's a Visa selected. I'm not going to scroll through the exact JSON here because it has some of that credit card information. Uh, but that being said, this is returning all those options for me. Uh, if I hit Complete My Order, it's actually going to bring up the Vehicle Select. And if I scroll down one more time, you'll see right here. Again, this is a different actual, like a different API than what I'm used to seeing. This is a get user vehicles from the D2C uh, API, but there's an equivalent HTTP request, which is what I use in code. That being said, if I switch off of Proto and over to Hex, you can see this a little more clearly. If I zoom in, you'll see I have Black Land Rover, which is my friend's car from the original video. I have Blue Tesla, which is one of mine, and then I have Silver Toyota, which is also one of mine. So it's showing me all the cars that are in the app, again, in the order that they're appearing in the uh, in the screen as well. So I'll select the car right here, I've selected Blue Tesla. And as I've selected Blue Tesla, you'll see something else has changed. We have another request to the Orders API right here. And you'll notice we passed in that ID, again, that we got from adding the item. So what we've actually done with this here, if I look at body, we have set the payment method here, which is that Visa card. I'm gonna do some, do some blurring. And it's set the vehicle ID. And so all that information is stored here. And actually, in fact, I just looked over at my phone. This actually submitted the order. Um, so that's one interesting thing. When you send a put request to the order uh, API with the uh, ID of your order you wanna submit, you can set the payment, you set the vehicle ID, and you set this, uh, if I can find it here, status, if you set status to submit, it's going to tell the server, hey, place this order. And so you see, I have on my phone, order submitted. Uh, I'll just cancel that here, but you get the idea. And so that's sort of a quick overview at the different steps. So just to recap, we're going to fetch my favorite locations. We're gonna select one. We're gonna fetch the menu for that location. We're gonna add all the items to an order that we'd like to order. We're going to select a vehicle, select a payment method, submit the order, and then we're good to go. We can drive to Chick-fil-A and pick up our food. So that's a high level uh, recap over these steps. 
that we're gonna need to write in code. Now, fortunately, I've already written all of this code that we would have to write in order to make something like this. So I'm gonna walk you through kind of a high level at how this works. There's a lot of details here, and so I'm not gonna dive into every nook and cranny because it is quite complicated, and especially with the menu and item selection process, that code is as spaghetti as can be uh, because of the way Chick-fil-A has formatted their JSON. It's just a little bit painful for me to work with, um, but I'm sure that uh, if I had spent another time, spent more time writing the code, I could probably make it work, but you know, a research project like this, you're not writing perfect code, you're writing code that hits the API and you can go get chicken. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look. You'll see we start up the um, command line tool here. Fun fact, I actually did not make the Minecraft plugin first. I made this command line tool first and then I ported this into the plugin. I actually do not know where the source code for the plugin version is, uh, but I do have the command line version, which is great. Uh, so I'm able to show you this here. You'll see that we <clears throat> get those favorite locations here with that get favorite locations request we were talking about. We can go ahead and dive in. You'll see we're using this location uh, endpoint, which is location, API, blah, 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 users, me, and some extra information at the back here. We will parse the response into this uh, list of store locations. That's one thing I did is I had this uh, request model, this abstract class, where uh, each piece had the uh, request the actual request that needed to be sent to the server as well as the function to parse the response. Um, so that made it quite easy to um, couple those things together and make sure that we're sending the, the right things and parsing them in the right way. So quite helpful here. Uh, you see we select our location right here. We're using just a Java scanner to solicit input from the user in the command line. This is the order uh, process. You'll see it is a nasty, nasty while loop. This thing is awful. Uh, this is what allows you to order multiple things into uh, one package instead of spending a bunch of single orders. Uh, we have to loop through all the categories uh, while the user wants to continue adding food. And then from there, if those, uh, if you select a meal, for example, you'll get what I've called, uh, or I think even the uh, API calls a sub option. A sub option is where you have an, an item group. So let's say I select a meal from the menu, that's gonna have an ID. I'm gonna have to go look up that ID on a different part of the menu. Once I find that ID, I have these different options I can pick from. They might have their own group IDs, which I have to fetch and kind of so on. So it's a bit of a recursion problem. Uh, and you'll be able to see how I've solved that. Uh, if we kind of scroll down, you'll see that we have recursively create meal item from menu item. It's gross, it's terrible. Um, we're not gonna worry about this at all. The point is it works and it allows the user to select multiple items. That's kind of the important part here. Uh, from there, I'm gonna create a line item. Uh, a line item is just a component of an order that the server is going to receive and then it'll look up what that item is and add it to my cart essentially. And some comments out code there. Uh, looks like some other information here. It's, it's a mess, like I said. Uh, if you don't order any items, then we just don't do anything with it. And then from there we get to, uh, what is this, step three or four here. We're going to get the vehicles. We're gonna select the vehicle. We're gonna create the order on the server. So that's one place where the app and me dif uh, differ. We actually do the vehicles uh, process first. Um, in fact, we don't even, oh no, we do, I, I do need the selected vehicle, just how I wrote the code, but that's actually not required by the API. I think that's probably just a, I needed to do it this way because that's how I wrote the code problem. So that's okay. Uh, right here, we fetch payment methods. We select the payment method down here. And then from there, we will say, hey, would you like to submit the order? After that, exactly what the app did, we set the status to submit. We set payment uh, to whatever payment method we selected. And we select the vehicle ID. Finally, we send that off to the server right there, and then the order is submitted. You can, again, drive to the store and pick it up. Let's go ahead and see this in action on the command line here. So I'm going to pick one of the stores here. It's gonna fetch the menu. I will go ahead and uh, show something off that's kind of interesting. I'm gonna select breakfast. Now, uh, I'll show my time here. My time is currently 2.44 in the afternoon. They will not accept a breakfast order, which is why this is kind of interesting here. If I pick a biscuit meal, which is number zero, it's gonna go into that sub option select because a meal references that item group. Again, it's a mess, but it's okay. Uh, we're gonna select the Greek yogurt because it is also a sub option. Uh, and then we'll uh, pick the one with granola. And there we go. Uh, we've moved on to picking a drink. I'm gonna pick cherry Coke, which is number seven. And we'll pick a large cherry Coke because I want to die as young as possible. Although cherry Coke is not the reason for that. It's just the fact it's a sugary drink. Cherry Coke itself, no blame. It's great stuff. I'm gonna hit done. This brings me back to the category selection. I'll hit done one more time. And there we go. We're now into vehicle selection. We're gonna select the car we want. 
And there we go. That's exactly what I wanted to show. This is the, hey, don't order breakfast. It's way after hours. And the reason I wanted to show this is we have this user title, user message. It says, we're sorry, you can't do breakfast, so on. If I am to open the app one more time here, we should be able to see that in the order section, there's my uh, meal that I've ordered, but it also has that exact error message that shows up, which is kind of interesting. So there you go. It's uh, all server driven, which is a, a great thing from a um, code cleanliness point of view. So there you go. Interesting stuff there for sure. So just made a different order here with just a chicken sandwich in it. You'll notice that we have selected our car. It's sent a post request to the orders endpoint, which will create the order. This is the ID we got back from the server. Then we're going to grab the payment methods we have. I will select the visa there. And it's gonna ask, hey, do we wanna submit the order? We'll say yes. And there you go. We're gonna send off this put request with the ID we got right here. And there you go, order submitted, here it is. Here's all the information in case something went wrong. I, I kind of use this to debug because I actually placed an order the morning of filming the original video. Uh, I went out to the parking lot of the Chick-fil-A and I was debugging this in the parking lot so I could go through the drive. It was, it was a mess, it was terrible. But if I open up the app right here, it's gonna take me to that orders page and it says order submitted. So I hope that was uh, interesting and informative and you kind of understand a little bit more about reverse engineering. Um, I guess really specifically how the Chick-fil-A API works, but this applies more broadly as well. I've uh, reverse engineered the Tesla app um, a little bit, uh, the DoorDash app in particular. I've made like a spinning wheel that will find the um, restaurants in my area, pick one. It's just a nice easy way to decide uh, what we should go eat. Um, so well, that one's fun. Um, I've looked at the McDonald's app before, or I mean, plenty of other apps. Um, most apps, uh, generally speaking, you'll be able to do this kind of technique with. There are some that will not allow you to do this thing, namely uh, TikTok I've tried with. The reason for that without getting too in the weeds, kind of out of scope of this video, uh, TikTok uses a thing called certificate pinning, which prevents this kind of essentially attack from occurring, uh, which is a good thing uh, in general, although it makes research like this a little bit more complicated and we can't get under the hood of an app as easy. Um, but anyway, I digress. Hopefully that was interesting. If you have any more questions, please leave them down below. If you have other videos or topics you'd like me to cover, then uh, also please let me know. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see uh, more content like this. Uh, as you can see from my uploads uh, in the past you know, couple years, I kind of only upload at this point whenever there's something at least semi-interesting to talk about. So uh, if you have any ideas, again, please leave those down below. I'd be happy to take a look. Other than that, hope you all enjoyed. Take care.